I know that we just discussed this in this video, but that one is a little over 45 minutes long. Let's go ahead and take the most important information, cut it down into categories and make it short and simple. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. A lot of you guys saw the review video that I did whenever Howard Blum, Bloom, again, I don't honestly care and I get told back and forth. So it is what it is. Okay. Howard was over there doing an interview on the Drunk Turkey Show. What's interesting to me, and this is not about me or the Turkey Boys, okay? This statement. What I'm noticing is that my video reviewing the interview has double the views than the original interview itself. That kind of screams lots of things to me. <laughs> not about me, again, and not about the boys, but about facts versus hearsay boo-boo bullshit. It kind of is like obvious which one wins this fight, right? I also noticed that a lot of people on Twitter we're sort of just now starting to like know that information when it was getting discussed on the interview and into all the discussions that has happened since. So over the past few days, I've been seeing a lot of people on Twitter not knowing any of this stuff and now like questioning things that they have previously known about the case that they've heard from mainstream media. And I know that I've been following this case and a lot of you guys have been following this case since before we even knew their names before we even knew who Kaylee, Maddie, Ethan, and Zeno were, because the story was just so insane. But there's a lot of people that haven't been following it since the beginning. And so a lot of this stuff that we are kind of sounds like we're talking about over and over and over again to a lot of people is actually new information. So I wanted to take the few documents that I do have and the information that we do have as fact not this hearsay crap that Howie is over there trying to pull because there's no way in shit that Brian Koberger was formerly fired before the Christmas holiday, but able to log in, grade papers, access his email, and message students on December the 16th. No, when you get fired from a place like that, all of your things are deactivated, your keys are turned in, your badges are deactivated, they don't play and most of the time they're going not to not even let you go in and clean out your own crap they're gonna bring it out to you i mean i've never been fired but that's pretty much how i've always heard about it and that's what people are talking about too i know for a fact watching people get fired from medical places from banks from places with high security they don't just allow you to leave after losing your job with all of that very 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 private information that is basically critical to their survival of staying a business. So if they formally fired Brian Koberger, he wouldn't have been able to grade papers while he was in Pennsylvania. You think Howard would kind of like know how the world works, right? Especially with how old he is. <laughs> okay, so what I did was I took this 166 page drop that we all got like well over a year ago and I separated it out into categories. I have the inventory paperwork from the search warrants and stuff in one. And then I have the WSU and trespassing stuff in one, Don Daniels stuff in one, like it's just all separate. So this right here is the original. And well, I'll probably end up doing a live to go through some of the other stuff, but this one's gonna be just like real short, okay? But I just wanted to show you, like this is where these other documents that I'm gonna show you actually like came from. And again, if you haven't already gone through like the inventory results and stuff that was taken in from the search warrants of Brian Koberger's apartment and stuff like that, I did do videos on those a whole long time ago. The description box will have those links if you guys need to catch up on all that stuff. But this is the 15 pages out of that 166 pages from what I have that has anything to do with WSU and where I am getting my interpretation of what happened with his job. This is one of the ones that I showed you. It's the key retrieval document and then another document. Now, what you're gonna see is that this 38 right here that's redacted is this 38 down here that's also very redacted. So a lot of people, myself included, believe that this is like some huge long, some sort of like resignation, not resignation, but like this is his, your fired letter, okay? And it very well could be. But you know the problem is that, look at the date. On the 6th day of January, 2023 at 11 a.m. is whenever he was given this paperwork at the jail. 
Howie over here is going in, putting in his stupid book and going on interviews saying that he was formally fired as a TA before the Christmas break and that he was not getting his scholarship to not to even be able to continue his education after the Christmas break. Like his stuff was donezo. All right. There's no way in shit because he was also, like I said, grading papers while he was in Pennsylvania. He had access to all of his things. If they would have formally fired him, then there would be no reason why his dad, who, as far as we know, went to the air, got to the airport and got a rental car and drove to Brian's apartment. But then they drove Brian's car back to Pennsylvania together. If he was no longer going to be at WSU, don't you think that his dad would have kept the rental car so that they could bring all of his electronics back home too? He left all of his electronics and a whole bunch of other stuff back in his apartment. That doesn't sound like somebody who wasn't planning on coming back. On top of that, he switched his plates. And some people might say, oh, of course he did. He can't just do things that aren't making any sense because he's trying to like blend in. Okay, but he also went ahead and took care of it, most likely because he had no plans to not stay. He had no plans to not come back from Pennsylvania after break and continue. He planned on doing just that. And all of the proof is literally in documentation. And that's why I wanted to go through this, because if they really would have fired him before the break, then he would not be being served these papers, being told that you can't come back from a place that he was already fired from, like um, uh, three weeks prior. There'd be no reason for a trespass letter, literally at all. So again, I don't know exactly. I am assuming this is his, your fired letter, and I don't know why it's two and a half pages. I have no idea. There could be a lot of stuff there that we just don't know. Now we do no, or sort of no, not really no. I don't know if what I saw was legit or not. I don't. But we have been hearing that he had issues with a professor, a male professor, not a female professor, and that he was basically being told that he was like grading too harshly or whatever. I, I, the point is this. <laughs> there's rumors of issues, but there's no real proof of issues from what I can tell. Everyone wants to claim that he's some sort of like sexist incel but it was a man that he had issues with. He wasn't grading women worse than men. He was hard on both of them. He expected certain things from both of them and those certain things matched. So it's not like he was grading women harder than men or giving men more of like a grading curve than he was the females. That's not the case at all. And any of the female professors that Brian worked with thought he was great. It's just this guy that had issues with him. Now there have been other stories but nothing that can be actually proven. It's all just a bunch of people talking and telling stories. I've yet to see physical proof of stuff. I mean, there is even something about him losing a position at some school or something he was going to, to learn to be a police officer or learn to be a security guard, something like that. And he ended up like getting kicked out for some reason, but I haven't seen any documentational proof of any of that either. Now, if something comes up or if maybe I dismiss something, feel free to let me know. Let me know where it's at. I'll pull it up. I'll take my own look at it, figure out what it says and come out here and I'll present it for what it is. If it is indeed true stories that are happening here. But just like with that whole bullshit story that they're trying to make out about how he was the only person apparently that this woman trusted with her problem of somebody breaking into her apartment and he helped her put cameras and security stuff up, but they're using that as trying to say that he was watching her after the fact. But there's no proof of that. There's not even proof of that story in general at all. So I don't know why people just keep making a bunch of stuff up. We have documents. We have real tragic shit actually going on. All of this Jerry Springer bullshit is so unnecessary. You even see here, January 5th, it's not signed. These were brought to him. He signed them, I guess, and then gave them back. But you would think they would have put the signed copies in here. I don't know why they didn't do that. But anyway, this is five days, almost six days after his arrest. And he is still having to give them permission to enter college campus housing apartments. If he had been fired... All of those things would have been handled already. All of them. It looks like he didn't take his keys for his WSU office with him to Pennsylvania, which makes sense to me. Some people would say, oh, he left him in the apartment on purpose because he knew that they were going to have to like get a warrant and go in and get them. 
I mean, I don't see a reason why he would have needed to take those office keys with him to Pennsylvania in the first place. He could have lost them and then he would have been in trouble. Leaving them at his Pullman apartment was a smart move. But if you're no longer eligible for said housing, why are you having to give people permission six days after your arrest to enter said campus housing? That doesn't make sense. And this paper right here is just him actually being served with the paperwork itself. See, and now we have this where he was served with the paperwork. It states, pulled to document civil paper service. Trespass admonition given to Chief Jenkins to be served to Brian C. Koberger. Papers were sent to the jail in Pennsylvania and served to Koberger by Officer Jay Garcia on 12-31-22 at approximately 12-16 hours at the Monroe County Jail. See, that's crazy to me too. So they sent him a trespassing letter the day after his arrest, but they didn't bring paperwork to him to get his keys and stuff out of his apartment until they already had him back. You sent him the trespass paper all the way over in Pennsylvania, knowing that he was arrested for quadruple homicide. Did you think that he was just going to like bond out and walk over? I mean, that's just strange to me. But they did that, but they didn't also send over the key retrieval document or that number 38 document that's completely redacted until a week later. Why didn't they just do it all at one time? And this is the same thing. It's basically just them saying, yeah, we did this. Now, this is the one where it's just the service worksheet for the exact same thing. Officer Jay Garcia is the one that ended up getting the information. He was served on 1231. There's the Monroe County Jail address. And then it just says paper served at jail and signed paper sent back to Chief Jenkins. And then this is a trespass letter. December 30th, the day of his actual arrest. The day that they announced his arrest. So I would really love to know the time that this was drafted. Was it prior to them arresting him? Was it after? Because if it was prior, that means that the school got a call and said, hey, we're about to go arrest your TA. You might want to handle your stuff. So if they ended up giving them like a heads up so they can look cleaner, I'm, I'm super curious. Anyway, this admonition is to inform you that you have been trespassed from all areas of Washington State University campuses. This includes all buildings, sidewalks, breezeways, courtyards, access roads, and parking lots, and any other Washington State University campus property. That also means the campus housing, right? This admonition is effective immediately and will continue until pending student conduct charges have been resolved and you have been given permission in writing to return to campus. Now, that's where it gets really interesting because that's where we hear student conduct charges. Charges is an interesting word to use if someone is having issues at a school when it comes to like job conduct. I don't know if you would say the word charges. That's why I don't know if this is just like worded weird and people are questioning why it's worded weird or if there really was a problem because you don't call issues at a school like that charges. It, it No, that doesn't make sense to me. Trespass means that your privilege to be on or in the areas listed above has been revoked or denied by Washington State University. If you are found in the areas listed above in violation of this admonition, or if at the conclusion of an investigation it is determined you were actually in or on the areas listed above in violation of this admonition, you may be subject to arrest and prosecution for criminal trespass under RCW, and then it lists the law. If you have a legitimate business need with Washington State University, you must be escorted by an official with Washington State University, and arrangements for such escort must be made prior to you entering the area listed above. This means you must make arrangements with WSU police, there's the phone number, before coming on campus for any reason, and it's signed by Gary Jenkins, Chief of Police for WSU. And this is where Brian signed it. His handwriting is horrible. So yeah, that's why this like right here, this pending student char conduct charges, that's more to me like depending on if you're innocent or guilty will depend on if we allow you back on campus or not of what you're going through right now because it's such like a big, big deal. I just don't know if they just like worded it strangely because of the situation because again, you having issues with your professor and y'all just arguing about stuff and it apparently causing issues between like you being a TA for said professor and like whatever, 
A, they could have easily just like moved him to work under a different professor if this one person is the only person that had a problem with Brian. Some people just don't work well together and that could have easily been corrected by just moving some pieces around on the chessboard. It really wouldn't have been that much work for them to correct. So again, I don't know if the way this is worded means anything or if it's just worded like that because of the current situation. That's strange wording for what it's supposed to be anyway. And then the end of this is literally just this again. I'm like they're, they're, that's it. That's it. So like I said, the dates on the documents and the way they were served to Brian in the timing in which they were served to Brian, it doesn't equal fired prior to Christmas break. He might've been having issues could have been, but that's not what this is. This isn't a formal firing. No, you're no longer a TA. No, you're not going to be able to come back to school and you've just lost your entire scholarship ride. No, that's not what any of that shows. Again, his dad picked up a rental car from the airport, drove it down to Brian's, and then ended up not driving it back to Pennsylvania. They drove Brian's car together. And if he was really leaving, don't you think both cars would have been needed in order for Brian to get all of his stuff back home. Cause again, he left all of his electronics. Why do you do that? If he had no reason to come back because he just lost his entire ride to school and there was no way that he was going to be able to do things again, you don't get fired from a job as a TA, but still have access to grade papers in the middle of Christmas break after you're already 2000 miles away from the school. It's just not how that works, but I wanted to put this out there by itself because the other video was a lot longer and it wasn't the focal point. And this is the focal point in this one all the way. So if you guys haven't seen this, here you go. Let me know what you guys think in the way that I'm thinking about stuff, because again, I could be wrong. I really could be. There could be pieces of this that we're missing here, but from what we're seeing, it doesn't equal fired prior. It just doesn't. But yeah, that's it, you guys. If you guys like the way that I present this information and give my opinion, please not forget to leave a like on your way out and subscribe to the channel if you were not subscribed already. Happy Father's Day to the ones who actually deserve to be called fathers. I hope you had a great Sunday. See y'all.